Is data quality important to you? It freaking better be. If Les was here, he'd be blowing up. This is something that I know gets him hot. It gets me hot too. Have People need to be able to trust the data that's inside of our Power BI reports. There is no better way to do that than with the tools that we already have at our disposal in this wonderful way to validate data from your Power BI models and from the sources. I can't wait to show you how awesome this is. Let's check it out. Okay, so tools, where are the tools? Out on KratosBI.com, head over to our menu, go to Data God Tools. Once we're out there, we're gonna scroll down just a little bit. There's the Data God Validation Report. Once you download this, what is that tool gonna be built in? It's gonna be built in yours and my favorite tool, Excel, all right? So, you're gonna open this up. Now you might have to do some mucking around to get to your data sets to connect right because this one's already set up to connect over to my Power BI instance. So you might have some issues to set this up. So you might have to play with it a little bit to get it all set up and working. But uh, if you go under queries under data, data, what now? And under queries and connections, you, you click on this, you'll see all the connections that are in there. You're gonna have to go through and adjust these so that they're not pointing at at Kratos BI stuff, um, but pointing at your data set. Uh, but either way, the principles are the same, okay? So if we close this out, basically we connect to our data model and we add in a dimensional value and then we add in uh, the, the values that we're going to be testing out and validating, right? So this is really important. Honestly, I do this for any measure that I create, especially if I'm trying to replicate that in a source system. I set those up, I create them, and then I uh, go through and I add the same measures in, break it out by a common dimension, and then I do a test on it. Now, if the first column's gonna test to make sure that they're the same. So in other words, that I've got the right years in each of the columns in, in this case. So in this case, I'm looking at year open, uh, but if I'm looking at something else, I wanna make sure that uh, row by row, I'm looking at the right values, right? And then from there, I wanna make sure that I set up the right measures that I'm testing out. So visually I can, I can see what I'm looking at and that these things are right. And then it is a simple, 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 simple subtraction test that I'm going to do. It's gonna do a simple subtraction. I'm gonna subtract one from the other and I'm gonna round it to zero decimal places, all right? Don't pay attention to those pennies uh, or you know, if you have to go down to pennies, make sure you only go to like one or two decimal places because weird things can happen you know, with, with, with decimals. So don't get too bogged down with that, especially if you're doing an analytics, so the penny shouldn't be as big of a deal, all right? So focus in on setting that up. This then, um, you know, you can kind of test this, all these things out, uh, each measure out, you could test broadly across the system. And then what I always do is I include a sum uh, at the top that, that basically goes through and does a test of all of the items that I'm testing out. Because maybe you're gonna do a test over 100,000 records, right? And you wanna make sure that all 100,000 are right. And if you just casually look at it, it's gonna look like it's fine. Um, but at, at, you know, further down, it might not be. What you can do in this case, in the model, I copied and pasted the values in. This is Excel though. You can easily go into queries and connections, create a connection to another data source, to the source system, and bring in all of the data, you know, write a query, you know, that's gonna go against the source system. So you gotta pull that in and then, you know, create a pivot table here to do your math off of. The reason that's super helpful is because then if you ever have an issue down the road, um, what you could do is you could set this to up to automatically refresh um, or to refresh it, you know, in the future. So like, hey, someone says there's an issue, you pop an open, you pop open your validation workbook or workbooks, you do your, you know, you refresh each of your data sets and you'll clearly see what measures, measure or measures that you may have issues on, okay? Point of order, I highly recommend that you go through and in the same way I'm using year here, like this would be like the date dimension, um, I would really recommend that you set up a baseline validation, not just for every measure, but for every dimension and pick a attribute from each of the dimensions that has a 
uh, a low enough granularity to be relevant, but not so low as to be just too large and too ungainly for you to work with through, okay? Uh, you'll find that's especially important if you're attempting to do something with like hundreds upon hundreds of, of millions of records, right? Like you won't be able to load into Excel or you have all sorts of problems with your validation. Uh, and, and doing line by line validations can be really challenging it just won't add up the way you're expecting it to it'll be an issue but if you can do this for each dimension you can go through and, and do these validations then you can prove that you know the information that you have is is strong it's solid it's good and then you can always circle back to this and do this again right so uh for example i i did you know uh, a, a different one you know here is copy and paste in the first one the second one i brought in an actual data set and then um you know or i did this as a query so i could actually execute this um so you could actually see both different mechanisms for doing those tests okay uh as with all of my templates apps uh this is a a great power bi seed that i use all the time when it comes to working in excel so i always go through and make sure that i fill out these common things to make sure that people understand you know what it is they're working with and using but this is uh, a practical use of of my excel seed in action is to create a validation notebook all right <laughs> Okay, I hope you find that it's very helpful for you, or at least the concept of it's helpful for you. Uh, frankly, I use this all the time. If you're not using this, it is super hard to like build out a mechanism that allows you to do validations uh, where when Excel is a tool that is at your fingertips, super easy to, to use, to create formulas, to do subtractions, to hunt, find any issues and stuff like that. So definitely consider that. All right, if you have questions, you have comments, leave them in the chat down below. As always, you know, it really helps me out. If you like, subscribe, turn the alarm bell, let your family and friends know about this content. I would really appreciate it. Um, but you guys have a great day. Peace.